Hey gang, what's good? Welcome to another Morrowind Mechanics video guide. This time, we'll be going over equipment condition and the details surrounding your means of repairing it. While I've already touched on weapon and armor condition in other videos, we'll be covering additional minutia here. That said, if either you've already seen those, you're already familiar with certain concepts, or you're just in a hurry, feel free to use the timestamps in the description to skip around. First, let's cover armor and shield condition. Obviously, if your character uses just the unarmored skill, then a lot of this will be irrelevant to you. Anyway, let's begin with the basics. In combat, when you're struck by a physical attack, one of your armor slots will take condition damage. Which armor slot is damaged is up to chance each time you're struck. However, certain slots have higher and lower chances of being affected. These odds are on screen now. First and foremost, your block chance is taken into account, and if you succeed at blocking, then your shield is always damaged. Keep in mind that when you have a shield equipped, your block chance is at a minimum of 10% and a maximum of 50%. If you want more details on block chance, we go in-depth on it in my Shields and Armor video. Anyway, if we fail to block, then one of the other armor slots is damaged. Of course, as we touched on earlier, if that slot is empty, then it's treated as unarmored. Now, the exact amount of condition damage dealt is exactly the same as the amount of damage your armor prevented. So, for example, if an enemy tries to attack you for 10 damage, but you only take 7 damage to your health, then your affected armor slot will, in turn, take 3 condition damage. Now, since fully repaired armor prevents more damage, it also more quickly degrades. As condition and effectiveness dwindles, so too does the amount of condition lost when struck. This means that equipment will stay on its last legs for longer than you may anticipate. This is important when you consider that constant effect enchantments on your armor are unaffected by condition deterioration. All that matters is if the armor is still equipped. Now, another important thing to keep in mind here is that blocking an attack prevents all damage, and that damage amount is entirely unmitigated by your armor or any spell effects. What this means is that shields take significantly more damage than other pieces of armor. So if you use a lightweight shield, it'll be breaking on you much more quickly. Thankfully, shield condition has no impact on block chance. It does, however, impact your overall damage mitigation through armor. You see, as a piece of armor, including your shield, loses condition, it loses effectiveness, as we touched on earlier. I should point out that all of the condition damage calculations are performed before factoring in the difficulty modifier. So, for example, if you're playing at a very high difficulty, you may notice your armor taking much less damage than your character. If you take your armor's current condition relative to its maximum, and convert that to a percentage, you'll have that armor's current effectiveness. Oh, and if you're completely new to the game, I guess I should say that you never need to worry about losing items if they reach zero condition. You'll simply just unequip the item. Anyway, because of how diminishing returns on armor rating works, losing condition isn't as big of a deal on heavy armor and high tier armor. If you want more on the specifics of how armor rating works and all that, check out that Shields and Armor video I mentioned earlier. Moving on, let's look at condition on weapons. Keep in mind that this includes both melee weapons and ranged weapons, like bows. Anyway, your weapon always loses condition whenever you successfully strike your opponent. This does include when your strikes are blocked but doesn't include when your target evades or you miss due to stats and dice rolls going on behind the scenes. Now, the amount of condition damage dealt to your weapon is always 10% of your raw, unmitigated physical damage being dealt with each individual strike. Like I said, this is physical damage only, so spell damage from on-strike enchantments don't factor in here. In essence, what all this means is that assuming your own stats remain constant, 
you'll always lose roughly the same amount of condition, regardless of how weak or powerful your opponent is. Furthermore, it's important to be mindful of excessive overkill, particularly during the late game if you're making use of sneak attacks and fortify strength effects. Dealing way more damage than is necessary can result in you needing frequent repairs. So, just like with armor, as weapon condition deteriorates, so too does your damage. Just like before, take the weapon's current condition relative to its maximum, convert that to a percentage, and you'll have your condition modifier. Also similar to armor, weapons are quick to lose condition initially, but as they grow worn and deal less damage, they in turn lose condition at a much slower rate. In a situation where your weapon is at 25% condition or lower, it's sometimes better to attack rapidly if you're using a melee weapon and it has an on-strike effect that deals any type of spell damage. Assuming you have enough charge in your enchantment, you'll still deal full damage with said enchantment despite the reduced physical damage. Anyway, if you'd like more details on how physical damage is calculated for ranged or melee attacks, refer to my other videos covering just that. Okay, now that we understand the importance of condition and how it works, let's move on to maintaining our equipment. As we touched on earlier, you can of course forego this whole process by just using conjured equipment. And frankly, they're a great choice of weapon during the early game, or until you find or create better enchanted weapons. Anyway, the simplest way of maintaining a weapon is just paying a blacksmith for repairs. Now we go over the details of all this in my bartering video, but here it's easy enough to know that unless your armorer skill is very low, it's almost always cheaper to buy armorer tools and repair your items yourself, since performing your own repairs also advances your own armorer skill by 0.4 on each successful repair, it can still be considered a good investment even early on if your character is beginning with low points in armorer. Now, just in case you're completely unfamiliar, you can pop open the armorer interface by simply dragging and clicking an armorer tool onto your character's image on the inventory menu. It's also worth pointing out that joining the Fighter's Guild gets you access to their guild chests, which contain several repair tools for free. This chest should respawn about every 30 in-game days, so it's worth just taking the contents out and placing them nearby for when the items do respawn. Alright, moving on, let's take a look at the formula used to determine our odds at repairing an item. It's on screen now. As you can see, the strength attribute factors into the formula just as the luck attribute does, both of which are actually weighted equally. Naturally, the armorer skill is most valuable, with one armorer skill point equal to 10 points in either strength or luck. Finally, all of this is impacted by the fatigue modifier. However, this formula was actually written incorrectly. Rather than multiplying your stats by the fatigue modifier, as all other formulae we've covered before have done, this one divides your stats by the fatigue modifier. This means that you're actually better at repairing with a depleted fatigue gauge, and worse at repairing if your fatigue gauge is topped off. Now fortunately, several mods, including the popular Morrowind code patch, fix this error, making it function like all other formulae. Anyway, this all gives us our chance to repair. The game generates a random number between 1 and 100, and if our repair chance is higher than that number, we succeed. Now, let's look at the formula used to calculate exactly how much we repair on a successful attempt. It's on screen now. As you can see, it's quite simple. You'll note that while it doesn't directly make use of our armorer skill, it does make use of the same 1 to 100 number that the game generated earlier. So, indirectly, having better chances at repairing can often, but not always, result in repairing an item for more condition. As you might guess, the quality of tool being used factors into the repair amount as well. All of the tools are on screen now. 
It is worth noting that tool quality has no impact on repair chance. So, if you're trying to manually level your skill, there's no need to spend gold on high quality tools. Okay, let's cover some of the higher tier armorer tools and exactly where you can get them. So, while lower tier tools are plentiful and in heavy supply at most blacksmiths, the top tier, Cyrolus Sacus's hammer, is only sold by the man himself. You can find him in Ebenhart at the Hawk Moth Legion Garrison. Although he does restock this tool every day, he only carries one. That said, he also restocks Grandmaster tier tools. The only other vendor who also restocks them is Lorbrumol Gro Aglak. However, he requires you be at the rank of Defender in the Fighters Guild. Events during the Fighters Guild quest arc can make interacting with him problematic. It's worth pointing out that Cyrolus is also Morrowind's Master Armorer Trainer, and can raise your skill to 100 with enough gold. Unfortunately, this functionality is sometimes bugged, and he won't offer any training. As before, if you have a community patch mod, like the Morrowind Code Patch, then you don't need to worry about this. Finally, depending on whether you've installed the official La Femme Armor plugin, Cyrolus may initially appear differently from how you see him here. This is a minor bug in which he equips the better armor added to his inventory because of the plugin. Nonetheless, he's hard to miss. Alright, that should do it for Morrowind's armorer skill and equipment condition. Hopefully, this helps you get a better grasp on this simple mechanic that's integral to weapon-based combat. As I touched on earlier, I've got many other mechanics guides, just like this one, covering many other aspects of the game. Give them a look, too. I also do a weekly playthrough of Morrowind on maximum difficulty. If you're into those sorts of videos, maybe give it a shot, too. Nonetheless, thanks for tuning into this one. Peace.